All right, in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of Adobe Premiere. This is uh, 2022, um, and basically, usually when you open up Premiere, you'll greet with something like this. And they do have a Learn tab, and there's stuff in there, and it's good, but some of it's pretty long. Uh, for example, this uh, beginner's tutorial that you see here is a link I'll put in the description. It goes to here, and it's really like an hour and a half long. I think I can kind of summarize it down to like 20 minutes. So let's give it a try, maybe even less, uh, but I want to give it to you in a way that if it's your first time, this is going to make some sense. So first thing you do is click to learn editing skills and get these files if you'd like to follow along in that way. Uh, once you open that up, you're going to extract this. Uh, you can just copy and paste it basically onto your desktop, which I already have done. So uh, I'm when you go back to Premiere, you're going to start a new project. And it's going to ask you for some media to begin with and stuff like that. Honestly, don't worry about it. Let's just hit create. All right. And once you have that open, we're going to create it from there. It always takes a second. Okay, great. So let's uh, let's get a timeline in there, a sequence, just to make some sense of this. So I'm going to do File, New, Sequence. And here is the um, list of available presets. Uh, just go to Digital SLR, 1080, 1080 at 30 frames a second, um, 424 frames, it's fine. And I'm going to click OK. That's going to be our, our basically our frame size and also our frame rate. Okay. Um, and next thing I'm going to do is go back to my project right here. I have the sequence, so if I ever close this, uh, by accident, I can double click on the sequence and it comes right back here. Um, now let's get some media in there. So I'm going to double click in this open area. Or I can go to file import. Either works. And I'm going to go to that uh, thing that I just downloaded and you did as well. Go to media files and we're going to use all of those uh, videos inside. We're going to hit open and it goes down here into my bin. I can see it like this if I would like to have a preview of it or I can just leave it as uh, icons like this. Um, you see more here, but here you... You know, here's the audio clips, here's the video clips. I kind of like it like this, so I'm going to go with that. Um, okay, so first thing, let's say I drop a clip in there like like this. I just drop it in. It's going to say, hey, do you want to change your settings? Um, I actually do, because I wasn't sure exactly the frame rate or frame size here, so I'm going to hit change sequence settings, and there we go. All right, it changed, changed it, and um, should be good now. All right, and you can do this with pretty much any camera, any file footage that you have. Okay, um... Now, if I play this right now, you can see it's going to play right over here in the sequence because I have it down here in the sequence. So this is the sequence monitor um, or program monitor, and this is uh, our timeline that we're going to be using. So you can see it actually had a bunch of extra I don't really want on there. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this and just delete it. And instead, I'm going to double click on the source, in, um, source video, and I can watch it up here, and I can decide where do I want to begin. See, look, the camera doesn't really move at first, so I'm going to start right there by pressing I, and then I can grab that playhead and move down, and it's going to top out, let's say, right about there, at an O, okay? And you can see now I have this area highlighted. Now, if I grab it from here, it brings in both an audio, and, audio layer and a video layer. I'm going to zoom in right here using this. Now, this doesn't actually make it longer as I'm... Uh, in duration, but rather it just zooms in. So as it plays here, it'll show up there. Um, and let me just show you as well, if I would have just grabbed audio, just bring in that layer, and you can see there's it's not really much of any audio, or I can grab just the video layer by grabbing here. And if I want to bring this up, I can grab this part and pull it up so I can actually see a little uh, thumbnail of it. Uh, but instead, I'm going to grab from here, and it's going to grab both, okay? Um, and this is okay, but uh, maybe we just add some audio too. So I have this uh, music I'm going to use. So I'm going to double click on that, and I can play a bit of it, and I think you might be able to hear it. So it starts out kind of slow, and then you have this like bass drop, I guess, which I do like. Um, so maybe that's where we'll have our transition. So I do like this. It might be a little long, so again, I can press I and O. Um, yeah, so let's just bring this down in there, drop it in there, and you can, I can actually make this a little bit larger, okay? And I like uh, that sound right here, right? So I kind of want mine to, to end right there. So I can go to the edge of this clip and pull it in and just click and drag in to that edge. I can kind of see it's lined up with it. Or what I can do is I can hit spacebar when I hear that sound right here. So 
right there it hits, right? So I can actually do Control K, and that'll cut it in that spot, and that also allows me just to grab this and delete that part, okay? Uh, that's pretty good, and then we can go to another clip. Let's try this one out. I like this one a lot, and I'm just going to bring the whole clip on that one and drop it in. Now this one you'll actually hear a little bit of audio. Let's try it, so... And I like that. It's subtle. It's not too much, and I think I can hear it just fine. Um, ooh, but it doesn't really get me to my next spot. So if you listen. So one thing you can do, and I don't know if I'd want to do it on this one uh, or not, but you can do speed duration, and you can actually slow this thing down a little bit. So if I did like uh, 80% and hit OK, it's actually going to go beyond that spot, and I could just back it up if I wanted to have it transition at that spot instead. And it does play pretty well. See, it's getting a little jerky, though, so I don't know if I'd want to do that. So I can hit Control-Z to undo that uh, and then put it back to the way it was. It's nice and smooth the way it is. Um, so maybe I'll just leave that one go. Now, maybe I don't actually like this clip here, right? I have this awesome video of these kids playing soccer, right? And maybe that doesn't go with the feel of this video yet. It's kind of more fun and joyous later on. Uh, so maybe I'll save that one. But let's let's take a look at this one. This one's pretty slow. All right. So I can just grab this one and move it over. Or if I were to use this whole clip and drop it in, I can move the... I can, so basically I want to put it here. Okay. So I can do that two ways. I can just move things over. You know, it takes a little bit of time. Move it over here. And I can get rid of this gap by right-clicking, ripple delete, right? Or another way I can do that is if, let's say, this was already next to it, I can, as I move it, I can hit control and what that'll do is it'll split that clip and put it right in the middle or if I grab it and go all the way to the spot here while holding control I press control you can see those arrows that pop up I let go and it pushes the other video down now what you'll see though is it split up my audio and it just cuts right out right and I don't want that either so I'm just gonna grab that audio and join it back to where it was and by the way if yours isn't clipping like it goes boop, it's kind of like magnetic because mine is turned on. If you don't turn that on, it's kind of hard to actually get it to touch where you need to. So just keep that magnet on right there, okay? Oops. There we go. All right, so let's try that out. Ooh, you actually see I made a mistake here. So if you drop this down, there's a line here. It's hard to see, and then there's another line. I actually pulled this one up when I was moving it. So I want to put that back to zero. So that's one way you can control audio, for example. Let's actually go to the beginning and learn a little bit about audio. And I'm going to zoom in. And, you know, a lot of times videos don't just come in like this. They'll, they'll fade in. So with the audio, what I can do is I can click on that layer here. And if I make it a little bigger, I can see I have a keyframe. I'm going to press it once, go towards the beginning, and press it again. And I can pull this down. I'm going to pull all the way to infinity or negative 999. <laughs> all right. And what this does is it's going to gradually bring in that audio and that was pretty quick and so I could even pull this way down if I want and it's gonna fade in slower okay uh, probably should have my visuals fade in as well so I'm gonna to go to effects right here and I can type in uh, for example dip right so before I even do that you can see there's different audio effects audio transitions video effects video transitions and I could go there and look for the ones that I want dip to black is just the most common Instead of clicking all that way through, I can just type in the word dip, and there it is, dip to white, dip to black. And I'm going to put that on the edge here. And this is showing me that the transition will last that long. See, it came in like that. If I wanted it longer, I could make it longer, and so it takes longer to come out of darkness. Probably a little too long. I think the default is just a, a second or so. So um, I can do it that way. Now, if I didn't like these... Uh, the audio the way it is um, there's also another easier way to do it if I go up to effects this is effects controls okay so as long as I'm clip it, whatever clip you click on it changes the effects controls at the top there so I'm on this audio you can see I have this um, these keyframes here and down here and so if I wanted to move it here it actually moves it down here as well you can have a little more control over it let's say they weren't even there I could highlight them and delete them and instead of doing a dip to black I could do gain, and there's a constant gain. That's a way I can fade it as well. So now it's going to gain from nothing to being um, regular volume. Pretty good. There we go, and boom. All right, 
that looks good. So if we look, we also have some audio we can use. It's some voiceover work right here. And you can listen to this, but basically she talks about going home. She has, she has there's people, there's the, the great forest and whatnot. And it's going to be up to you. This is basically the story we have. You always start with a script or a story and then get the visuals. So uh, we can grab just the audio layer here and pull it down. And you can play it from there to see what it's like. This is my story of returning home. And at some point, though, it's almost too loud, the music. Not so much there, but later on when it's a little more upbeat. It gets hard to hear, right? So at some point, you're going to have to pull some of this audio down. So one way you can do that, the simplest way, would be right-click audio gain. And you could just lower the whole thing by, like, negative 10, for example. Um, you know, I'd say 5 is a, a little bit, 10 is quite a bit. You know, 15 or 20 is quite a lot. So just give you an idea. So let's see if I can hear that again. So that's pretty good, right? So um, the thing is, is that's a hard transition right over here, though, when I play it. It gets, like, immediately quieter. So um, you have to be conscious of that. Usually what you would want to do is once you start speaking again, you would turn it down um, using those keyframes that we saw before. So clicking on that, make one dot, go a little further, click on another dot, and just pull it down to about negative 10. All right, and that should be enough. Yeah, and, and I like that audio there. You could even like transition that audio a little bit. Uh, one thing I haven't showed yet is you can right click and un, um, unlink right here. And I could, uh, for example, unlink this one as well. This one has no audio. So like what you can do then is you can click off it. I can drag that audio or just click it and delete it. And I can move this one independently from it. So you can hear that bird chirping right before you even see it. Right. So that looks nice. Um, and, and the audio just kind of fades out on its own, so I could just do the same thing. So unlinking can be really nice uh, to use. So you're going to grab whatever clips you want to kind of match the action over here. Uh, you know, just keep in mind that, you know, the music kind of picks up. Um, I can also go in here and take this audio layer here, and I could cut some out. So uh, instead of having this longer gap, I am going to uncheck audio 1 and 2, and I just have audio 3 selected. And if I do Control-K, for example, then move down a little bit more and do Control-K, what I can do is I can select that little clip right there and delete it, and then right-click and do Ripple Delete. Now the audio is a lot closer together, and it's going to um, uh, it's just going to basically take out that, uh, that gap. So uh, you're going to need to sort this up based on the visuals. Even if you used all of these clips full length, it's not quite going to be enough. Okay? Um, let's say towards the end you've edited what you'd like in there. Uh, we also could still use a title. So I know how I want to finish this video. I'm going to have these kids playing uh, ball. And so actually I'm going to bring up the audio again by pushing another dot here, another dot here, and pull that audio back up to where it was before. Uh, but then I'm going to add my title. So let's uh, try that out. So uh, a couple things. So first off, I'm always pretty much in the editing um, uh, preset here, workspace, and I'm going to go now to uh, graphics. Okay. And what I'll need to do then it takes a second to load, but it will show all the titles that are available to you. Um, and I'm just going to butt it up right next to it. And if I'm over here on effects, I'm going to do constant, not constant again, I'm going to do dip to black on that title once it loads here. Um, so I'm going to have that ready for you. And I can go to browse. I'm sorry, that's where I needed. And I'm going to drop this right next to it. Right now it says title, just double click it. And I'm going to call it home. And I'm going to do a nice little scale effect here. So I'm actually going to hit the timer button, scroll down, hit the timer button again. Right here is this keyframe. So I have two keyframes, one here and one here. But one's going to be a little bit larger. So when I play it now, it'll look like this. So that's pretty good. And I can take that dip to black and drop it on the end as well. Oop, come on, buddy. You can do it. And that way it'll fade out just like the music does too. All right, I like that. So as long as you fill in the rest with whatever video you got, I think you got something pretty pretty nice. Uh, at that point, what you can do is, if all this is there and you're ready to export, you go to File, Export, Media, and here you can get into all the presets. We can watch a separate video for this, but essentially you're going to name it, choose the location, mine's going to desktop, and matching the source at H.264 is perfect. You're going to export, it's going to take a little time, 
but your video will be done. Congratulations, you just edited your first video and exported.